Thanks for joining me, Bastish B, for Import City. A look at the world of 80s and 90s Japanese gaming. In particular, we're going to check out Japan exclusive games and English fan translations and show some really fun stuff that require no Japanese to enjoy. If you like the Famicom, Super Famicom, Mega Drive, Mega CD, Saturn, and PSX, then this may be for you. So now let's check out today's two games. The console of focus today will be the Sega Mega Drive. We'll be taking a look at two Japan exclusive games, namely Glay Lancer and Battle Mania 2. And in the pop culture segment, we'll be taking a brief look at anime and how it relates to the retro gaming Japanese scene. Battle Mania Daigenjo is a scrolling shoot 'em up released exclusively in Japan for the Sega Mega Drive by Vic Tokai in 1993. It's a sequel to the excellent original that went under the name Troubleshooter in the West. I'll put a link in the end credits for my review on that first game. I describe this game straight off the bat as fun, fun, fun. The tongue in cheek approach and the well balanced difficulty makes you want to just keep playing this till the wee hours of the morning. The characters Maria and Mania are back taking care of trouble and shooting the hell out of each problem thrown at them in the nine levels of madness that this game throws at you. The graphics have had a major upgrade from the previous title and are extremely colorful and well animated as is the backgrounds and the variety of the locations. You again get to select your weapon before each level which affects the type of smart bomb you also receive and some are way more useful in certain levels than others so pick carefully. The bosses are way more elaborate this time and have a treasure feel to them meaning just when you think you've killed it it transforms again and starts attacking. It's awesome and totally keeps you on your toes to the better end. This game is a bit more challenging than the first one as the pace is much faster and so are the amount of enemies that they throw at you. The stages also switch themselves up from horizontal to vertical every few levels to add that bit of variety. But just be aware, the vertical scrolling levels are much harder than the horizontal ones. The music is really good, really upbeat tunes, really catchy stuff, but the sound effects are a little bit mediocre but not enough to take away from anything of the game. As a side note, just make sure you go into the options and set what control style suits you. It makes a big difference to the enjoyment of the game overall. This is an excellent hidden gem of a shoot 'em up from Vic Tokai, who seemed to have made a full career out of hidden gems. Whether you hunt down this game on the original Mega Drive version or play it through emulation, you're in for a damn good time. So this game did get a release outside of Japan, namely Korea, very limited, so most people still wouldn't have played it. And if you're thinking of importing the game, it's completely playable in English. It's very simplistic gameplay. There is also an English fan translation if you're interested. Now let's switch things up and take a look at the Japanese anime scene. Anime, if you're not familiar with the term, is the Japanese description for cartoons. It's a variation on the English word animation. As we saw in the first episode of the series, manga or Japanese comics have gone hand in hand with anime to produce one of the most unique and distinctive styles of visual entertainment, not only for kids, but adults as well. Japan's first animated feature was a black and white World War II propaganda film called Momotaro Sea Eagles, released in 1943. But it wasn't really until 1963's Tezuka Osama Astro Boy TV series that the genre really came into its own. Episode 1 has the origins of Tezuka and his manga roots for anyone interested in his beginnings. Anime went from strength to strength in its native country, producing countless classics like adaptations of Heidi or Lupin the Third, both taking inspiration from European stylings, which is a common thread in a lot of anime. Western audiences slowly got adaptations of some of Japan's best in TV form. The first anime I ever watched was a TV series called Battle of the Planets, or better known in Japan as Gachaman. It was amazing to see these complicated narrators, ongoing storyline, and real consequences for actions. It was unlike any other cartoons I had ever seen. And this continued on into the 80s with iconic adaptations of Super Dimension Fortress Macro, or Robotech as Western audiences know it as, which was one of my personal favorite TV series. 1988's Akira was a landmark for the anime movie industry, not only in Japan, but also in the West, heralding a massive influx of dubbed and subtitled VHS releases to flood the Western markets in the early 90s. I can't even count how many bootleg VHS subtitled anime series 
series I used to have. Everything from the complete record of Lotus War series to 3x3Rs and Bubblegum Crisis. It truly was a golden period for the art form. Anime video game adaptations really kicked off in the 80s, just like the manga adaptations, with hundreds of titles being left in Japan and never converted to English. Many of these anime series already had western dubbed TV roots, but were still passed over for the video game releases. Whether they felt the translations weren't worth it or the audiences were just a little bit too small to justify the cost of converting them, the end result was a lot of missed anime games for popular series such as Robotech, Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball and so many more. Today's two games may not have anime roots per se, but the animation style is obviously present in full force and hopefully through ongoing episodes of this series we can explore some of these excellent anime based games as well. And now let's jump back to today's second game. Glay Lancer, or also known as Advanced Buster Hawk Glay Lancer, was released in 1992 on the Sega Mega Drive and published by Messiah. It was a physical only release in Japan and Korea. The game was a horizontal scrolling shoot 'em up developed by NCS, or Nippon Computer Systems, who were a Japanese game developer formed in 1980 and were defunct by the year 2000. The game was released through their distribution division called Messiah, and if you're an avid Japanese import gamer, you probably already recognize them for their heat of excellent Japan exclusives such as Cho Anarchy, Star Cruiser, Vixen 357 and many unconverted installments of the Langrisser strategy series. And back to Glaylancer which delivers 11 levels of excellent shoot 'em up action. At the beginning you get to choose your weapon style and the way it behaves and helps you. For example choosing reverse means extra guns will concentrate on foes attacking you from behind or follow will target anything and track it until it dies. There's a whole bunch and I suggest trying them all to see what suits you. The weapons are pretty varied from powerful lasers to twin shots, the short range but brutal lights sabers, bouncing shots, etc etc. It's a nice mix and they all have their uses in certain levels. Another gameplay aspect that I like is the speed option, where at any time you can change the speed of your ship to escape or dodge fast intense bullet situations. I like most shooters, this actually has a pretty cool story as well, all played out in anime style cutscenes and continues between the levels for the whole game. The story involves a girl named Lucia who steals a prototype combat ship, the Glay Lancer, in an attempt to rescue her father who got abducted by an alien race. So it's basically Iron Eagle in space. There's a lot of things to like here, from the impressive graphics and enemy variety, short but intense levels that don't overstay their welcome, and a really cool story which is not common for this genre of game. The music though admittedly is just average and totally forgettable, but at least it isn't annoying in any sort of way. If you plan on getting a physical copy to play, the game is completely playable in its Japanese form, even the menus are already in English. The story obviously will be completely lost in translation though, so you have to decide how important that is to you. A Japanese physical re-release was issued a couple years ago, but good luck on finding that, it was extremely limited. An English fan translation though is available, so playing it through emulation will give English speakers at least the full game experience. This game also in 2008 did see the light of day in the west in the form of a digital version on the Wii Virtual Console, although the story was still in Japanese. But as with all digital media, it's here one day and gone tomorrow. So if you never got it then, then you're out of luck. Overall it's a pretty good game for fans of the genre to sink your teeth into. It's not the greatest shooter ever made by any means, but the combination of many little features make it well worth experiencing. And thanks for joining me Bastish B at 64k. If you can like and subscribe that will be greatly appreciated and I'll see you next time. Cheers.